Today I'm back in this bayfront park over here that has a walkway over the water. I'm going to take you guys over here again. I was only here once before and it's such a beautiful spot to shoot a video. So we're going to go check this out again. And uh, we're also going to be talking about what's going to be the secret killer behind home buyer demand because we know home buyer demand is at its lowest levels that we've seen in quite a long time. But a lot of people are attributing this to high interest rates, which no doubt is having a big impact on home buyer demand. And there's a hidden part of the housing market that's going to make home buyer demand even lower than you think moving on throughout the rest of 2023. And here's what it is. I'm gonna give you guys the lowdown right away. It's going to be rental prices, okay? Because rent prices have been falling every single month for the last few months. In fact, let's take a look at this. Renters with new leases in January paid a median rent that was 3.5% lower than they would have paid last August. Now, 3.5% drop in rental prices is not huge, but what it is, is it's a sign of the times, guys. We've seen home prices decline month over month since June last year. Now we're starting to see rental prices decline month over month as well, which is great news whether you're a home buyer or a renter because it means no matter what type of housing you wanna get yourself into, it's gonna be cheaper than it was last year. And check this out. This is the first time in five years that rent fell every single month over a six month period, okay? Now, I think that's significant because it's the first time in five years, right? We haven't seen that in quite a long time. And this is just going to continue as we see the most rental inventory hit the market than we have seen in quite a long time. And the interesting thing about this is rent prices are coming down at a time when people are seeing more and more layoffs and at a time when more rental inventory is being added to the market. So this is a great thing to happen if you're going to be in the market for a new lease at some point this year. Now take a look at this chart from apartment list. This shows the rise and now fall of the median rent price across the nation. And you guys can see just how much things spiked up throughout 2021 and 2022. And now that we're hitting the beginning of 2023, you can see how things have been starting to level off. But the thing is guys, the rental demand that we saw over the past couple years did not go unnoticed by developers. And so according to CoStar Group, we are gonna see the largest swath of rental properties hit the market in 2023 that we have seen since 1986, okay? That was 37 years ago, guys, <laughs> to put that into perspective. So there's supposed to be about half a million new rental listings coming online this year. Guess what that's gonna do? It's gonna lower prices because more landlords are gonna have more competition than they've had in quite some time. And if you don't wanna be sitting on a vacant property, then your only choice is gonna to be to lower the rent to get a tenant in there who can actually afford to pay. And like I explained earlier, this is gonna have a double whammy effect on the housing market because on the one hand, renters are gonna have more choices and lower prices. And now that buying a home almost everywhere is more expensive than it is to rent, you're gonna have more people starting to look at renting instead of buying because it's the more financially viable option, which is going to even further decrease home prices because people who are serious about selling are gonna have no choice but to lower the prices to where people can actually afford to buy. And think about this, what incentive does a home buyer have to jump in and buy when buying probably costs 20 or 30% more than renting a similar home in the same neighborhood and they can just get a better deal right now and wait out the housing crash versus you know people that are just jumping in right now and getting the front row seats to the Titanic, you know what I mean? It just doesn't make any sense. And people aren't stupid. They're gonna opt for the smarter decision, which is saving more money right now because everyone's being squeezed from the recession and inflation. So saving money on housing prices is going to be helpful for everybody. And it gets better from here, guys. People who say I'm all doom and gloom, you have no idea what you're talking about because you're missing out on some fantastic news right now. Because this new 
rental inventory is already starting to have an impact because take a look at this. The amount of tenants who renewed their lease in January declined by 52%, which is the lowest level for January that we've seen since 2018, okay? That was five years ago. So what this data probably suggests is that we're likely seeing a scenario where tenants are not renewing their leases because they're finding better deals elsewhere. And what you're probably gonna see as more landlords take notice of this is more landlords are probably going to not be increasing the rent much, if at all, during their next lease renewal because they don't wanna lose tenants. I mean, getting tenants right now is not gonna be as easy as it was over the past couple of years. And basically the rental market is mirroring the for sale market with real estate because the year over year rent prices are still higher than they were a year ago. Similarly to median home prices still being higher than they were a year ago. But what we're seeing is month over month declines, which eventually will lead to a year over year decline. But it just takes time like everything else, guys. The prices are not gonna come down that quick. They didn't go up that quick either. It might've seemed like it was quick, but think about it. The prices took three years almost to get to where they're at right now, you know? We had the lockdown start in March 2020. It's almost March 2023. So it took us three years to get to this point. So it's gonna take time for all this to reverse, but we're seeing it happen right now. And in case you wanna know where rent prices are going down the most, in Seattle, rents are down 8%. Both Las Vegas and Boston, they're down 6%. And those are some of the largest decreases in the rental market across the country out of all the biggest cities. But make no mistake, guys, rent prices are still 20 to 30% higher, depending on where you're at, than they were a few years ago. But if this trend moves forward, just like with the for sale market, this is a good indicator that can get us back to more affordable prices sooner than later. But you're gonna have to have patience, just like with the for sale market. But if you, if you need to do a lease renewal this year, overall, this is good news for you. So you should be happy about this. Unfortunately, people in Australia are not as lucky right now. In fact, I saw this story today about people there that are in trouble, guys, because they're living in this nice newer building in Brisbane, and the landlord of this building is basically making everybody there homeless overnight, okay? These guys really do have some serious supply issues when it comes to the amount of rentals available there. So there's a building there in Brisbane called Utopia Suites. All the tenants there have gotten eviction notices because the landlord said, oh, well, we're gonna move in. That was the first thing that they said, but now the real story has come out that they're not moving in. In fact, what they're doing is they're turning these long-term rentals now into short-term Airbnb rentals. And Australia, like I said, has much bigger supply problems than we have here in the US when it comes to housing. It's so bad there that their vacancy rates are right around 1% right now. In fact, a little less than 1%. So the biggest problem that these tenants are facing that are being evicted is they basically have no place to go. And basically they're pushing people to live in their cars, do couch surfing, uh, you know, sleep in the park, sleep in tents, while people can come on vacation and live in their old apartment. Now on the one hand, the owner of this building is not doing anything illegal, but you could easily argue that it's immoral but what they're trying to do is get the biggest return out of their property that they can, and they, they feel like this is the way to do it. But what they should have done from the beginning, since this is a newer building, is made it a mixed use building from begin with. Like for example, here in Miami, they're building a new condo in Brickell that is literally for this type of situation. You can buy one of these condos and Airbnb is t perfectly legal there. You can Airbnb it as much as you want or live in it, use it as much as you want, rent it as much as you want. And these apartments probably should have been set up with something similar like this from the beginning to prevent this issue from happening and just kicking all these people out. I mean, if this were happening to me and I was living there, I'd be trying to rally together all the tenants who are there who are getting kicked out and say, hey, as soon as these Airbnb listings come online, let's book all of them and we'll all move back into our old apartments and guess what, we're not gonna leave. Well, we won't pay rent, let's get evicted, you know? Like, let's make them evict us. Let's see how long it's gonna take 
to evict 300 people, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just kidding, like, that's pretty extreme. Who knows what kind of trouble these guys could get in if they did that. But hey, you gotta fight back somehow. And what they're doing to people is just wrong, you know? But needless to say, this is a pretty bad situation to be in over there. And I guess the rental outlook is not looking as bright in Australia as it's starting to look here in the States. This house has been on the market for quite a while, 162 days to be exact. No price cuts or anything like that, or price improvements, however you want to call it. The owner paid 700000 for the place back in 2017. Now they're asking $1,780,000. Unbelievable, right? But if you think that's crazy, the previous owner before him paid 400,000 for this house just a year earlier in 2016 and now 1,780,000. Now, here's an interesting thing that's happening right now that we can look at that might tell where things are headed or what people are thinking. It turns out that consumer spending over the course of January was actually through the roof and far beyond what was going to be expected because of how much everything costs right now due to inflation. And the problem with this is that it's going to just make it harder for the Fed to get inflation under control because the more people spend, the more aggressive they're going to become in the amount of interest rate hikes that they do and the percentage of interest rate hikes they do at each one of the meetings. And the, the other reason why this is sort of an anomaly and quite unexpected is because we've been seeing the consumer savings rate drop by quite a bit over the past couple of years as people have started to run out of money. And in direct contradiction to that, people's spending rose 1.8% in January. The extra spending is likely thanks to strong job growth and rising wages. You also have retirees that got a raise this year and Social Security benefits went up by 8.7% in January. And they're saying that this is the reason why you're seeing people spend more money than expected. And so now more people are spending money on going back out to eat and traveling, going to the movies, different things like that. In fact, vacation visits to Las Vegas last year jumped by 20%. What's going on? Well, actually, if we look at the personal savings rate, it was going down for quite some time, according to the FRED data here, and it's starting to slowly creep back up. And this is another one of those scenarios, if you ask me, where good news can be bad news. Because on the one hand, it's good that people have this money and you know you have a certain percentage of people out there that can afford to do all this stuff. But overall, it's going to be bad in the long run because it's just gonna force the Fed to take more and further aggressive action, which is ultimately going to throw us into a deeper recession than most people are anticipating. Now, last time we walked past this house, everyone, including myself, thought the rent price was insane because they were asking $13,500. Well, guess what, guys? They rented it for $13,000, and it wasn't on the market for that long, only a month and a half before the whole deal closed from start to finish. So that's pretty normal for a rental and uh, pretty surprising. But when you look at this house, it is a beautiful property. It's on the water. It's been updated. You know, it's pretty decent size, but man, $13,000 a month in rent, you gotta be bringing in some serious dough to pay that rent. But when you look further into this, it also shows that spending is also growing faster than income in January. And people are probably getting close to their limit of how much they can spend. And this almost makes me think that a lot of people are just saying, you know, to hell with it, let's just blow up the credit cards and, you know, spend everything we can now while we still have access to all of this before it's all too late. <laughs> and that could be a doomsday scenario to, you know, to think like that, but who knows what's going on. This is just one of those stories where we just gotta wait and see how all this is going to shake out as the year progresses and the, the recession does become official because I think that's when you're gonna see the biggest change in consumer behavior overall, as well as how much people are spending because when the recession becomes official, you're gonna see job losses happen even more than they are right now. 
and people are not going to have this extra money like they have at the moment so and like i was saying before this is a great time to prepare for this now instead of going out and blowing the money on traveling and the movies and going out to eat this is the time you should be preparing for the recession but some people are just going to go all in and blow it all until the end now last year the stock market got hammered and along with that so did a lot of people's 401k portfolios unfortunately and the average 401k last year tanked by 20 percent guys and that is a lot and if you're looking at retiring in the next couple of years this is something that's going to be very difficult if not impossible to recover from and just doesn't put you in a good position right now. Let's take a look at some of the figures on some of these 401ks and IRA accounts to see what exactly happened. In the fourth quarter of 2021 to the fourth quarter of 2022, 401k balances fell from an average of 130,000 down to 103,000. And balances for 403b accounts dropped more than 19% from 115,000 down to 92,000. IRA accounts, it's even worse. Those fell on average by 23% from 135,000 to 104,000. And this analysis is based on more than 43 million retirement accounts. So there's a lot of uh, data to back up just how much things have gone down by. And Vanguard is reporting the same sort of losses, about a 20% drop in more, most people's portfolios. Now this property was also purchased back in 2017, but the difference is they knocked down the old house entirely and rebuilt this one from the ground up, and the new house cost $3,250,000. And it's just baffling when I walk past all these houses. I mean, brand new or not, it's still a lot of money. And half the time, these houses sell for cash, or sometimes they just don't sell at all. And it's just amazing. The level of speculation and wealth and craziness that happens here in Miami, it's always been just mind-blowing to me. Now, first of all, if you've experienced this and you can relate to this story, let us know in the comments if you've seen the same thing happen to your portfolio and what's going on with that and how this might affect your retirement because it'd be good for other people to know, you know, that they're not dealing with this alone, first of all, and maybe people can offer some solutions on what to do about this. But in this same report, they're starting to say that things are starting to recover though, just like they're talking about with the housing market. So I'm not really sure if this is true, or if they're just saying this to get people not completely depressed right now. They're pointing to the fact that between the third and fourth quarter of 2022, 401k balances went up by 7% from 97,000 to 103,000. So, that's not quite the 20% recovery that they need to see, but you know, it's a start. But the thing is, a lot of people need to realize that that recovery is probably temporary because likely the stock market is in a bear market rally at the moment. And typically how this ends up is you're just gonna end up having these small little rallies where prices go back up, but ultimately they're probably gonna end the year lower than they did last year. You know, if things keep going like this, and they call the official recession at some point later this year. Now, I don't know how, but they're saying that Gen Z savers saw their 401k balances jump 23% during that same third and fourth quarter jump last year, which is kind of crazy. Maybe they have more risky investments in their 401k. Not sure, it doesn't say, but that's an interesting thing to note. And it was actually reported by Fidelity that Gen Z was the only age group last year to see a positive growth in their portfolio and basically how things ended last year is the s p 500 ended the year 19 percent down year over year the dow jones ended nine percent down year over year and the nasdaq landed a whopping 33 percent down since it heavily relies on tech stocks so it's going to be interesting to see if we're going to post another year over year loss this year due to the looming recession that hasn't been called official yet but is supposedly coming because one interesting thing to me about the recession is because it hasn't been deemed official at the moment then they're kind of just delaying the inevitable in terms of the effects this is going to have on the market and you know it kind of makes people feel more optimistic than they should right now rather than be a little bit more cautious which is pretty evident based on this spending report that we talked about here and the more people that believe things are good 
are going to keep spending like times are good until they get completely smacked in the face with the recession and they're like, oh, you know, things changed. Well, we didn't know. <laughs> of course you didn't know, guys. You haven't been watching my channel. <laughs> and if you want me to end this with some good news, the good news about all of this is if the stock market does post another year over year loss and the real estate market finally hits year over year losses this year as well, this is all good news, guys. How is this bad news? This is fantastic news because it means that things are becoming more affordable again. That's great news. We need that. We need affordability right now because the way things were going, if it kept going up, up and up, nobody would be able to afford anything in the span of a few more years. So the fact that it's all starting to reverse now to me is fantastic news, but take it however you want as usual. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you click the bell notification down below. YouTube will alert you every time I post a new video. And if you don't want to wait, check out my next one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.